In five, four. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Laser Talk. It's Wednesday. It's 4 o'clock, so you know what's about to happen. I'm here with Ruben this week, and we've got some great things to talk about. What are we going to do? Yeah, so um, we're going to talk about a little bit with, uh, talk about the fiber machine. Um, Frankie's going to go over like a cool technique that he did. Um, well, Frankie's not going to go over it. We just well, recorded some yeah. stuff with Frankie earlier. We actually engraved this piece of glass, which is really neat. We'll show it to you in a little bit. But fiber machines typically don't engrave glass. We figured out kind of a neat trick to do that. So we'll show you that here in just a minute. Yep. And then we're just going to go over sourcing materials. And then the last thing, this weekly contest and all that good stuff. And so. some of your questions, different things you have going on out there. Uh, I think we had a question come in from uh, someone already, Ruben or Dave McGee. Is that correct? Do we have those over in the questions already? Not quite. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so we had a quick question. We'll start off with the, this question from Ruben real quick. So Ruben on Facebook asked, not this Ruben, that Ruben, the Ruben on Facebook, not, <laughs> you know which one. So uh, Ruben, I hope it's the same one we know from Orlando. If it is, how are we doing, Ruben? Good to uh, hear from you again. He's asking about the water temperature in your bucket. Now, it's funny, Ruben has a bucket here next to him. Now, I'll be honest with you, Ruben, you got to get rid of that bucket. You got to get one of these cool boxes, man. So you get rid of this bucket. You can get this bad boy right here. has all the connections right there in the back. Um, First answer is, you know, just get the cool box. Yeah. Um, those are available right now. You can uh, call your sales guy. They'll hook you up with the best deal available. Um, but temperature-wise, you want to range somewhere between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius. Excuse me, in your bucket. I had a Coca-Cola for lunch. I think <laughs> I just revisited. Excuse uh -huh. me. Yeah, so about 30, 35 degrees Celsius for um, your bucket, and that's a temperature you'd be looking for there. Um, the things you have to worry about uh, this time of year is freezing, though, in your yep. bucket, especially if you're outside. Now, what you want to add to it is basically a propylene glycol additive. Uh, the most common one is called Dow Frost. It's from Dow Chemical. Uh, you just add a little bit to your water, and that basically prevents the water from freezing. It just is a simple additive. It's kind of like a um, antifreeze for your uh, for your car or truck. What? Well, um, just out of curiosity, yeah. what what would you do if you came out and your water was frozen, like in your bucket, just like? Well, chances are, if you're just frozen in the bucket, uh, you're okay. You probably want to spring the bucket inside, start warming up, bring it near the fire, or whatever. Um, what you want to be careful of is if you freeze within your system. So if your tubing or your laser tube gets frozen, that can actually expand and break the tube, uh, cause breakage in your um, in your tubes. Actually, where your seals uh, connect from your tube to your laser, that can also cause a problem. So. Freezing temperatures, water, uh, usually a bad combination. All the things that can fail on your pool outside uh, in the winter can fail. So it's really something to be careful of and always be mindful of. Uh, two things you can always do is at the end of use, if you do keep it outside where it's cold, you can always tilt your laser up from one end and drain the water out so that the laser doesn't have any water on the inside. You basically just don't want it full of water. If it has a little bit of water and it freezes, it'd be similar to having a, like a glass bottle in your freezer gotcha. and it being half full and freezing. So there would still be some room for it to go because uh, water does expand uh, when it freezes and that's kind of the uh, the danger that goes into it. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So if you do have that problem, you know, make sure you, uh, you know, treat it just uh, delicately. That's probably the best way to go about it. And, uh, you know, getting gla uh, getting the ice to water as soon as possible is definitely, definitely your first thing. So let's dive right into uh, this marking uh, that we did this morning. Frankie, our fiber expert, he helped us out with this. Now, what they have um, done, now this is not something that we've invented here, but this is just a method that we have, I don't want to say perfected, but Frankie's really dialed in. Uh, basically, if uh, Charles, if you want to roll the little um, uh, graphic you created, uh, what happens is the fiber laser, which normally doesn't mark glass, it's usually the uh, frequency is just uh, the wavelength uh, won't penetrate or affect the glass. Uh, what it'll do though is it'll pass through the glass and touch the metal and actually bounce up and the uh, corrosion that happens from the, uh, the uh, stainless steel will actually be affected up on the glass. So what you're seeing on the glass example here is actually um, the result of the stainless steel being underneath the glass as it was marking. So if you want, uh, Charles, let's just roll the video of the process happening and we can kind of take a look. It's pretty cool. Now this was done on our open system, our FD uh, fiber system. Um, what's great about these FD systems, if you're considering, uh, like if you're just going to start a business with a fiber and all you're going to do is engrave tumblers or engrave other tchotchkes that um, 
you know, otherwise you would be getting like a 36 or a Pro 48 force, so you could do a whole bunch of them. Consider looking at a fiber laser yeah. system, uh, mostly because you can see the speed that the engraving happens is astronomical. It's about a four to one ratio uh, for quality, uh, sorry, for speed, and then quality is just through the roof. The uh, accuracy of the fiber laser uh, far surpasses that of the CO2. Uh, the settings here we have on this, um, if anybody's out there and they want to try to recreate this, basically that's just a, a sheet of quarter inch glass uh, with stainless steel plate underneath. Um, this is a single pass at 1,000 millimeters per second uh, at 100% power at 30 kilohertz uh, frequency. Uh, this is a single hatch at a zero hatch angle and a 0 0.02 millimeter uh, line distance. So a very accurate pass. Now one neat thing you'll see happening on the video there is it almost looks like a million little ants marching yeah. away from the uh, the fiber line. Now what that is is a little bit of the uh, dust corrosion from the stainless steel in between the glass and stainless steel layer marching away from the uh, energy of the fiber laser kind of going away. Uh, it almost looks like it's dirty and messy but if you see on the side it actually is cleaning it away and kind of um, uh, clearing the way for the, uh, the fiber laser. Uh, it's, it's kind of a neat side effect that happens. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, basically, just kind of get a little nerdy here, the mark performed uh, is basically a thermal heat transfer mark that allows the fiber laser to vaporize the stainless steel under the glass and transfer the steel onto the back side of the glass. Uh, the fiber laser can't directly affect the glass due to the wavelength. Um, the beam uh, will pass through the glass though without affecting it whatsoever. Now by doing, now placing the uh, stainless steel underneath the glass and focusing the laser beam to the steel, it allows the beam to, re to be removed by the uh, laser and then transferred to the reverse side of the glass since the glass is sitting flush with the steel. This creates a permanent mark on the glass as illustrated. Now this mark is, is amazing. It's uh, not only very permanent, but uh, it's not going to rub off or scratch off. It's got a really nice dark uh, mark and as it's finishing its last pass here, you'll see the lasers just doing the outside line of the mandala. Uh, it'll tip up and you'll really see the uh, crispness and clearness uh, far surpasses anything we can do on a CO2 laser. That's pretty cool. Um, if you guys follow us on Instagram, um, Frankie did a Bowser, like I think it was like a month ago. Absolutely. Yeah, it came out really well. The, uh, the Mario World, yep. uh, <laughs> Mario comic universe, uh -huh. uh, the Bowser uh, protecting our, the uh, I guess those are Mario 1s That's uh, uh, castles? That's Nintendo, actually. Nintendo. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Mario was yeah. on the Nintendo systems, yep. yeah. So, yeah. And then um, he did the dog tags on there too. Oh yeah, came so out pretty well. Yeah, the fiber lasers are uh, incredible. Now you see as we tilt it up here, we'll just uh, rack the focus a little bit. It marks the stainless steel underneath as it would before, um, and then just give it a quick wipe, and you see uh, really crisp and clear. Uh, I mean, just phenomenal how that comes out with the fiber laser. It's a very, very cool trick to do. Um, we'll actually spin it around here a little bit in the. Um, the uh, psych wall area where we do some of our photography so you can kind of see how it affects the, the one side and passes through to the other. Very clean mark though, a lot of detail, um, really impressive. It's kind of a fun thing to do too with the glass. Um, you can imagine if you were an artist and you were selling um, your art framed uh, with a glass pane on the front of your frames, a great way to do a neat little mark um, in the corner to brand your art and your material. Definitely. Uh, here's just a few photos if you guys wanted to kind of just uh, look at these real quick get some of the detail kind of see how it affects the glass um, in through the side of the pane um, really really neat just uh, kind of effect here now again the fiber laser doesn't typically affect glass so you can't use it to etch on the glass but you can use this method to do a nice dark mark on glass without using any sort of additive so there was no paint added to that there was no spray there was no uh, post-production there other than the single wipe you saw with the uh, the orange rag that was just about it yeah so. All right, well, uh, thanks, Frankie, for helping us out yeah, with that today. You, if Frankie. anyone's interested, again, um, those FD and FC systems, those are, that's a $10,000 system. So if you compare that to some of our pro systems, for the amount of uh, speed uh, and accuracy you get with the fiber, if all you're doing is engraving phones, iPads. So uh, tumblers, like you mentioned. Absolutely. Um, and you don't need to worry about powder coating or surmark or anything like that. You can just engrave right on those stainless steel tumblers with the fiber machine. Uh, and the speed, I mean, it speaks for itself. Uh, we showed a few weeks ago a side-by-side -side with the CO2 and the fiber laser uh, doing a similar mandala and I mean it was about a four to one ratio as far as speed and the accuracy was just pff, it was through the roof it was just so, so much better all right so we'll move on to the next section uh, which is going to be talking about sourcing materials and uh, a little bit of our uh, settings for those materials uh, with the hobby laser <laughs> oh, yeah great little lower third yeah. you got there uh, that Charles that's cool. a good one. Oh, look at that look at the texture on the leather 
Uh, speaking of leather, uh, Walker, who had to miss the show today, he was hijacked by a group of hyenas <laughs> on the way to <laughs> work today, and uh, he's still dealing with that. So if you can send some prayers out to Walker, he's <laughs> he's got his hands full today. Um, he has thrown the suggestion out before, but sourcing leather can be very expensive when you're doing different leather projects. Um, many times on Craigslist, you'll find a free or very, very inexpensive leather couch, yep. which you can just go and steal however much good leather there is from the couch and throw the rest of the couch away, take it to the dump. Yeah. Um, but it's a great way to source large patches of leather, especially if you're going to do big projects. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Walker gave that tip a couple of weeks ago. He says, uh, be wary though, Cra you know, Craigslist is a little sketchy, but. Absolutely, like yeah. if the person owns cats and dogs, be a little, <laughs> like maybe not worth, maybe not the couch for you. Um, Plus me and you were talking about um, recycling material just oh, in general absolutely, yeah. is a good uh, tip for anyone. We have a recycling box here and any scraps or whatever, just go in there and you know, if you ever need like a little piece, then you're good to go, you know. Absolutely. I mean, even your uh, Muse box comes with um, great things you can take off. Uh, we actually have a project available on Laser 101 that shows you how to take one of the uh, pieces of your Muse box and turn it into a rocket. It's uh, it's one of the uh, blast-off projects, so you can be making right away. Now, another thing that comes with the, your hobby lasers is the uh, sample pack from Romark. Now, online there are many options to go and pull product from. You can always go to Amazon, um, eBay, different places to source, but Romark, and if you check out down in the link, I think it's just on this side below, it's jppplus.com backslash FSL, and you'll actually get 10% off for joining their Points Plus program and uh, signing up a, as an FSL uh, customer. So what's great about using Romark products is Romark is a company that makes all of their materials to be laser cut, yep. to be laser engraved. So all of their design was done with laser cutting and laser engraving as the end result in mind. If you go to like Joanne Fabrics or what's the other ones? Um, the Hobby Lobby. The um, blue Bucket. And, you know, um, right? All the different, um, no, Blue Bucket, no. Um, <laughs> oh, you got, I guess you go to the Blue Bucket, Orange Bucket places, yeah. like your different home improvement stores. Yeah. Um, but as far as like a, um, a Hobby Lobby, Joanne's Fabric, uh, what's the other one? Um, um, the one over by PetSmart. Michaels, My there Michaels. we go. You don't have to be very worried. In the, so Walker's with us today. He's just not feeling very well. He's trying to hide mm. in the background, but um, <laughs> we'll get the camera turned around him here in just a second. Um, so yeah, Michaels, the other great place where you can go and get it. But uh, the thing about that, uh, they're buying three millimeter birch that's not necessarily intended to be laser cut. So it's a lot of inconsistency there. Uh, with Romark products, uh, especially their hardwood collections, the consistency of the from the layers of ply to the application of glue to the thickness of the material all being consistent, you're going to get a very, very consistent product that's going to give you very consistent results. Uh, that's why we love using it. That's why they're a partner of ours. That's why we stand by their product uh, very strongly. They have a great line of acrylics that the are acrylics dual layers. Are super cool. We love yeah. them. Yeah. Um, actually, do we have one of the? Um, yeah, Walker will grab one from uh, the the office. They have a new line that's a um, acrylic. Um, it's basically like an acrylic hardwood. It's a naturals collection. Oh, wow. Where it basically has a um, acrylic wood finish on the top with different colors underneath, so you can engrave away the wood and expose like white or gray or black underneath. Great for name tags or cool. door signs or different projects. Uh, yeah, we love using it here. Um, but all their acrylics that are two layer. Um, I mean, we have a bunch um, all around. Actually, the um, one hour build you guys did with the um, uh, what was it? The Dice Tower. Yeah, Dice yeah. Tower. That was we all one hour. And then the um, um, what do you call it? The um, we have the um, the blue ones. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here with the patents. Oh, so, the, sorry, patents. Yeah, the yeah, patents. Yeah, the patents. That was a great. Yeah, we'll just grab this from our screen. Um, great blue and white. So if you look at the Naturals collection here, this is such a cool bit. They have different stone and wood, uh, marble and granite. Now that's all acrylic um, with different, um, you know, backings on the underneath. But these are things that you can get on uh, that jpp.com backslash FSL. Um, if you sign up, uh, you know, they cost $6 a sheet, I think, uh, for their hardwoods and acrylics, uh, very similarly priced, which is the same price as you'd pay at Joann's or yeah. off Amazon maybe is a little less expensive. But what's great about their Points Plus program is every time you make a purchase on their site, you get points towards other purchases. So we've actually been able to um, you know use points to get some cool different materials here. Um, I know a few of our uh, Muse customers have gotten the um, early packs of the natural, or oh, sorry, wow. of the maker packs. Have already you know been able to get free stuff off the website based on um, you know what they've purchased now. 
and we don't mean to go onto a huge Rollmark plug here, but just to kind of give you an idea what's on the site, everything from sheet material like hardwoods and acrylics of all different sorts, they also have little tchotchkes can engrave. They're made for laser engraving. Now, some of that is, you know, a uh, anodized aluminum card with Surmark pre-placed uh, on the card so That's you can cool. do engravings on metal uh, with Surmark already there. Um, they do have, you know, different uh, items like Surmark, Thermark for, um, in, um, sorry, I'm not going to use those uh, names, but they do have different uh, uh, materials for putting on metals and doing engravings there. They also have keychains and uh, every little little chashki you can think of. Bunch of cool um, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, literally, they have, I think they have 10,000 SKUs, five to 10,000 SKUs, or something like that. It's astronomical how many things they have for sale and all of them designed for laser cutting. That's what makes them great. So uh, check them out. It's a Romark material. That's the brand name ran by uh, Johnson Plas uh, Plastics Plus. That's uh, JPP uh, dot com or JPP Plus dot com. If you want to put that up one more time for me, Charles, so everyone can see the website. JPP Plus dot com backslash FSL. Sign up for 10% off, uh, which is a great deal um, on everything. Plus that ships right to your house. You oh know. yeah, right yeah. to your house. Don't have to worry about it. You don't have to get up. You don't have to go. Um, yeah. If you order a hobby laser or a Muse Hobby laser um, since um, the beginning you should have a maker pack already with some of those samples inside of it. Pro Machines will actually start getting a, a sample pack of some of their machines here coming up soon. Um, so we'll be doing a lot more with them uh, in the future. Uh, best part about their hardware collection in my opinion is their uh, the layers of veneer that uh, make up their different walnuts and cherry and whatnot are so consistently thick that the power settings are very, very, very consistent as you use it. Which is a kind of a segue to this other thing yep. we kind of wanted to talk about. And we got a great question coming in from uh, our dear friend Paul Williams, who is a Muse Hobby laser user. Uh, this is his first laser he's used, and he um, he mentioned that many folks, and we obviously see it on Facebook, and All he asked about, um, yep. you know, is there a power settings chart available that will just tell us exactly what power settings we need to set so that the machine does exactly what we want it to do? Well, we wish that was the case. Um, uh, any company that tells you that they can give you the exact power settings for a 30 millimeter piece of wood should probably win a Nobel Prize or something because that's a <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> act of scientific accomplishment. Um, for example, here's um, the things you're dealing with. If Ruben lives in Florida and I live in Nevada and I make settings up uh, for different materials and I say, hey, this is what you do. You set your muse to these settings and everything will work fine. And I set them down to Ruben in Florida. Ruben's probably not going to have the same reaction nope. to material for a couple of reasons. Um, the humidity is different in Florida. Other atmospheric conditions um, will affect this. Uh, the material that he's using, we could have the same source. He could buy it from uh, Michael's. I could buy it from Michael's. And those two um, pieces of wood could just have came from different trees, let alone different batches of lumber. So the density of the wood, the application of glue to that plywood, the density of the glue, the viscosity of the glue, how consistent the glue is applied across the plywood, um, not to mention like the age of the machine, how much the machine's been used, how clean are the optics, you know, like there's so many things that go into um, the variables of it. If you're using wood, I mean the grain and knots of the wood, those, all those different things affect your power setting. So there's so many variables that it's just very hard to, you know, Abs that out. Absolutely. So if you can imagine, if we put up a uh, power settings chart um, and we say this is uh, canon law and what to do with your laser, we'd be kind of irresponsible doing that because people in different areas of the country would be getting very mixed results based on not only the different type of materials they're using, but the different type of conditions uh, mm -hmm. they're cutting within. So what we have on Laser 101, which um, again, laser101.fslaser.com, you can go there and check out our material test. Now what this is, is a one inch square, which basically allows you to put a test uh, size on your material and dial in the settings for dithered, solid fill engravings, and vector marking and cutting. So this uh, file is very useful. We have a step-by-step -step process. We also have some assets there so you can keep track of what settings you've used on different projects. So going forward, you can go back and see you know, what settings worked out well. Mm -hmm. Now that is available in an Excel sheet, a PDF you can print off, and a PDF you can uh, use on your computer and fill out as well. So lots of tools you can use to kind of learn the machine. And the best example that I think I've heard is it's similar to going to the guitar store and buying a guitar that looks just like Jimi Hendrix's guitar. Yeah. And then you get home <laughs> and you plug it in and you 
play that first note and you're a little confused that the guitar does not sound like Jimi Hendrix. It looks <laughs> just like Jimi Hendrix's guitar, <laughs> but does not sound quite like Jimi Hendrix's guitar. It takes just a little bit of time to, you know, get the tools out. Now, not quite as difficult as learning how to play like Jimi. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah but, you know, tough. a little bit of time will go by where, oops, drop a microphone, uh, where as you're learning about the uh, Muse and kind of understanding how different power, current, and uh, speed affects your material, you'll actually become a more educated user of the machine. And instead of having to go off of someone else's settings, you'll kind of start to know how to use a laser rather than just kind of blindly using settings uh, that are provided. Yeah, Shalisa on Facebook actually says, hello guys, uh, if we can get a starting point for material, I think that's what we're all asking for. Absolutely, so on that same material test page, you'll find a chart that has you know, your six or seven basic types of material you'll find and starting points to start that material test. So those starting points are, again, a variable, um, only because the way I like a photograph to come out dithered is gonna be different than the way uh, Ruben would like a photograph to come out dithered. Also, if Ruben goes and takes a photo and then edits it, and then I go take a photo and edit it, just the way that we edit that same photo, the power settings would be different to get the photo to turn out. Um, it's And also, again, the settings of the two different materials. Um, those starting points that we have on the material test page are a good place to kind of get going and what we kind of consider the middle, but based on the different um, conditions that we describe there, and then if you kind of follow doing the material test, and then if you look at the material test, you know, well, I want this to be deeper, darker, or what have you, we kind of walk you through the steps um, on how to make those adjustments, and then uh, set your adjustments, so going forward, you can kind of just hold on to it. Or essentially go back and find those settings someplace where you don't have to kind of do the material test every time. Cool. And I think we have another question here from oh, Michael. Uh, what is the speed of the Muse laser head at 100% in millimeters per second or whatever? <laughs> I'm trying to adopt uh, techniques from users of other lasers and it's difficult to calculate the equivalent power and speed settings on the Muse without knowing the head speed. Absolutely. So in other forums you'll find on Facebook, whether it's the Laser and Engraving Forum or RD Work Forums or others, a lot of uh, foreign lasers and lasers that operate in um, basically as RD Works as a core operator, you're only going to be dealing with millimeters per second. Um, the Muse Hobby Laser um, and Hobby Series lasers, the max speed of the head is about a inch per second uh, if you want to use that as a calculation. Um, I'd say the easiest way if you wanted to really kind of reverse engineer this so that you could use settings from other lasers like that is to create a 100 millimeter line and a 200 millimeter line and test a few of your speeds there and just kind of use those easy to use numbers to kind of reverse engineer. Um, some of those things are proprietary. Um, we give you an estimate about an inch per second because that is a very close estimate at 100% speed, but some of those specifics are proprietary and we wouldn't necessarily be able to give out uh, those specs. If you were desperately looking to go back into this and you were an engineer or something, you could take the stepper motors that we use, calculate the speed, weight, all those different things of the head, but I mean, that seems like a lot of calculation. Yeah. We could probably <laughs> just use the estimate of an inch per second <laughs> and, uh, and reverse engineer that for those, some of those settings. Um, really though, um, as you're thinking about it, the all that's really doing um, is affecting how much time the laser head is spending over top of your material as you're doing a dither or engraving in general. Remember, as we explained in Laser Tip Tuesday that uh, um, Ruben put out and that Walker mentioned in one of the one hour builds, uh, power is the number of times that the laser pulses over the area and the current is how much uh, power is getting to the laser tube. Um, so keep that in mind as you are you know, dialing in those things. Um, so you can kind of dial back power first and then current second uh, is usually how we like to do it, kind of get a general area with your power and then kind of fine tune it with your current by dialing that back. Um, that's a good rule of thumb to kind of think about. And then um, when you're doing dithering, remember that the only thing you have to adjust is speed, power, and density. So by density I mean your DPI. What that means is how dense of dots you're using in the area. If you're using a high density of dots, like 1000 dpi, you'll have a more effective um, engraving over that area because there'll be more dots placed in that space. Reversely, at 250, it'll be less effective in that space. But if you're doing something like uh, engraving on granite, for example, most of that engraving is done at 250 dpi because you don't want to overwork the, um, the stone yep. and engrave it. So it's it's a lot of learning. Uh, you know, a laser system is 
I mean, heck, we have CO2 gas in a glass tube at a vacuum where we apply electricity, uh, electrical current to it. <laughs> we create a beam of light, which we harness out a small diode, bounce it off a couple of mirrors, and then vaporize materials with it. The science lot, is crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of science going on there. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot to learn about how all that happens. Um, now, we try to make it as simple as possible by having the settings um, kind of dialed back a little bit from what you see in RD works, but um, those numbers should get you where you're going, but uh, really, uh, I would suggest to kind of like, uh, instead of reverse engineering what other people have for settings, use that as a starting point and kind of dial in uh, based on your settings uh, on your own machine. Yep. Any other questions from the internet here, Scott? That's all we got. All oh, we yeah. Got for the, oh, did Dave McGee have one that we just rolled past? Oh, you covered it already. Uh, oh, did we go over it? The uh, material test. Yeah, Dave has on here, actually. He said, um, I think it's the same one on there. He's talking about the material, the old material test on the Gen 5 said it would be helpful if we had it on the new Muses. Uh, right, so that material test that was on RE1 was kind of littered with uh, not only bugs, but there's the effectiveness of that laser. If you go to the material test instead, uh, not only are you wasting less material, but you're also dialing in and getting to conclusion quicker. Um, while you could run the material test, we could have something like that, we found there's more useful knowledge learned from running the material test and then dialing in than having some sort of large chart of uh, power going out. It also wastes far less material. So those are just different considerations we had. And then space size, uh, keeping the RE2 and 3 package as small as possible, uh, cutting some of the, I don't want to say the fat, but trimming a little bit of the fat of RE1 was a lot of making RE2 and 3 um, as useful as possible. I think they even took that off RE1 now with the new update. With the new update? Yeah, so, so there you go. So if you actually have the new update of RE1, uh, that material test has actually been taken off that as well. Looks like, though, we have one cool announcement Ruben can make. We have a winner of a contest. A weekly Yay! contest winner. It is Tanner Q. Qu 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 right? Q? Q? Quiet? I think it's Quai. I think it's, it's Tanner Quai. Qu um, Tanner was inspired by a uh, one hour build last week uh, using paper. This is a really, yeah. really cool paper. Uh, I guess you'd call that a lantern or a lampshade? Lamp. Yeah, he said ever since he bought a Muse, he wanted to make something like this. So there you go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, glad we could help out. Now, uh, speaking of materials again real quick, we'll just circle back. Um, a lot of things that people kind of forget about is there's probably a lot of things in your home that need to be engraved, that could probably use to be engraved, that needs to be personalized. Now, that could be luggage tags, um, backpacks, um, old pair of jeans, um, old pair of Converse. Yeah. Um, like that canvas engraves really great. Um, everyone has boxes that they can take. Everyone's order from Amazon has, uh, you can make really fun stuff with cardboard, especially stacked materials. That's always great to use with boxes. Custom mirrors. Custom mirrors, that's a great one. Mm. Our favorite thing to do in Walker, if he was not feeling so, his tummy wasn't hurt, <laughs> he would tell you right now. Um, he loves going into Goodwill and finding things for a dollar or a few bucks and taking it and either fixing it up a little bit or just personalizing it and making it a lot cooler by putting engraving on top. The, um, and actually, if you tune into our live engraving, that we actually had a power failure on our 90-watt system yesterday, which we just got a new 90-watt system here in our uh, little maker den here at the Full Spectrum Laser uh, facility. Um, that little box was a Goodwill find. So head into your Goodwill, spend a few bucks. Um, sometimes, you know, you go to Goodwill and spend 40 bucks, you walk out like you yeah. you, know, you said Christmas. It's like great. Hit the jackpot. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, if you guys are looking for um, motivation as far as, like, things around the house or whatever, follow us on Pinterest. Absolutely. We have a lot of cool stuff on there. So, Don't forget to follow us Pinterest, Instagram. Insta. Give us a like. Give us a follow. The the tube of views. Yep. Um, all the YouTubes. <laughs> that's out there. We're on there. we got videos, uh, a couple of videos every week, so make sure you give us a follow and a like on those. Um, another thing with the, uh, the material, really, um, when you're speaking of uh, recycling things, like everyone has paper around the house. Everyone has cardstock around the house. Everyone has those little things that you can kind of like piece together. And a lot of people think when they're laser that I'm just going to use this one material. And when you start mixing materials together, when you start using a little cardboard and a little bit of yep. cloth and a little bit of leather and a little bit of wood, then you start getting really neat projects going on with that different mixed material. So think about that as you're uh, looking around the house and thinking about materials as well. Um, what else do we have on the, uh, the agenda? 
think we oh, have. Yeah. Um, I guess one last thing we can talk about is this cool box. It is now available for sale. It's up on the website. Give your sales guy a call. This thing, if you're tired of the bucket, I don't care if you're an orange bucket or a blue bucket person. Either way, this thing is slick. It's neat. It's quiet. It's got some great feet on it. Keep the vibration down. Slick handles. Really easy to install. You can check out the uh, website that we put up about the installation. It's really easy to do. Takes about what it take us ten minutes yeah. about that to install it. But get rid of that bucket for forever now. Remember that includes an exhaust fan. That includes um, the chiller and the uh, air pump. So all those things now, you know, one little package that comes in a box and it can be set up and automated uh, on your Muse. So all Muse customers, if you are a Muse Hobby Laser user, please, you know, give your sales guy a call and check out that cool box. It's available now. Also, we have the Pro Series 20 by um, 20 by uh, machine. That's still got a great sale going on. You can get that. Uh, Pro Series machines for $4,500. Now, you might ask yourself, why would I get a Pro Series machine the same size as a Hobby Series machine? Well, if you're starting a business or you're doing anything where you are going to put a lot of work into this machine, you probably you might only need 45 watts. Well, if that's the case, this Pro 20 by 12 is a perfect machine for you. It's got a motorized Z table, comes with a chiller, only 4,500 bucks. Um, pass-through doors on it. And That's the best feature. Yeah, the that pass-through, pass-through doors, absolutely. Yeah. So those front doors on the uh, front there pass-through, uh, really easeable access on, from the side. And above all, it has its own stand. So the chiller fits right underneath and really has about the same footprint that a hobby laser does, mm-hmm. just a little bit more, but with its own stand. So and it can fit in the house, too. Absolutely. Yep. This laser fits through any door of your house, whether it's an office, home, or anything. You can slide this right through sideways, so any, uh, any door of your home. Um, we got through the weekless contest, one hour build. We're going to do a really cool one hour build this week. We have a reading. Um, yeah, reading it's a, thing. this uh, Friday's Read Across America Day. So we're going to do some bookmarks for um, our one hour build this week. All right, so. so get that uh, favorite book of yours ready. We've got a bookmark coming for it here real soon. Um, usual graphics for each category. We have, I guess I just read a part that not really is part of the script that you need to be worried about there. Just kidding. Uh, so that's, that's going to wrap it up for our laser talk today. We appreciate you guys tuning in again. Uh, we'll be again live on Friday with Ruben. Uh, will Walker be with us on Friday? Uh, I don't know. He might be oh, no. feeling yeah. something. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Walker really is a trooper. He came in today after not feeling well too uh, well this morning. But either Ruben or Ruben and Walker will be with us Friday. We'll be doing that um bookmark project um, on a one hour build. If you have any ideas for a one hour build, please throw them our way. We'd love to um, and you know, get at that. The um, Dice Tower we got as a suggestion from, I believe it was Scott in California. Um, that was a great suggestion. Any more suggestions you guys have, please throw, throw us our way. Yeah. We would love to make something. We do, we do these shows for you guys, so um, Absolutely. Basically. Well, we are trying to plug things like the cool box again on oh. sale right now on our website <laughs> available. Um, we uh, we largely do these shows, so hopefully you guys have a better experience with your laser system, and usually just have. Um, an outlet so you can get maybe a quick answer question asked or maybe you want to ask a question that maybe you think will impact everyone um, or maybe you just have something that you don't feel is quite enough to ask support you don't want to open a support ticket for but you're really interested in throw it away we'd love to talk about it ask about it if you got a topic idea if you have anything you'd like us to discuss please don't be shy send it to Ruben he'll figure it out we'll get it on <laughs> air okay uh, but uh, I guess well, until next time we'll yeah. just say see you next time and uh, keep making yeah thanks a lot Man, I-